God bless us, everyone. Hello, movie lovers, and welcome to our Christmas Carol Reviews. This is going to be episode number 12. If you have not caught the initial ones, you can find them on my channel. And if you want the uh, episode one, the introduction, it's going to be in the link in the description. So we are moving on to 1970s Scrooge, starring Albert Finney as the titular character. And let me say, we finally have a musical that I could really, really follow and really, really stand. It was a very, very good musical this time. I could actually follow the music. Um, the characters themselves, every single one of them had a good song associated with them. And it was just overall much better than some of the previous musical ones on the specials that we have seen before. So let's get right into it. Okay. One of the first things that happened in this uh, adaptation was you open up to a bunch of boys that were going from door to door singing. So instead of one boy, they were going from door to door and they only left after someone gave money, in fact, there was a guy uh, that popped out of the window and was like, hey, I'll give you some coins if you just stop. And they're like, that's what we're asking for. And then he throws some coins down, they pick them up, they walk off to the next one, and so on and so forth. So that was how we started to open it up. Then, of course, they get to Scrooge and Marley's, everything like that. And Scrooge denies them everything, and they move on um, really, really down on themselves because of that. But that is exactly how it goes out. Then one of the big things that got me on this was, um, or one of the changes that was a little bit different was, instead of Cratchit just leaving, he actually asked for his wages uh, beforehand. And that was something that we hadn't seen before in anything. And that's really what set Scrooge off on his whole rant of picking a man's pocket every 20, 25th of December. It gave it a real um, context to how it was working in. Uh, Albert Finney, how he portrayed Scrooge was, was once again, the apathetic type, but then turned mean whenever someone brought up his money or someone questioned his morals or they brought up certain things. So overall he was apathetic, but then some people wouldn't leave him alone. All of a sudden there's mean Scrooge. And like I said, every single character had, uh, songs in here. Bob Cratchit sang a song with Tiny Tim and actually his youngest daughter. Um, I can't think of her name right now, but she was there and they sang sort of this trio type thing about how Christmas is great and how even though they don't have much, they're going to make a big Christmas feast for everybody. And that was really well done. And then Albert Finney gets his, his first giant number, which is called I Hate People. But not only is it called I Hate People, it follows the normal sinister, villain, lyrical things using giant words, kind of like Scars Be Prepared in The Lion King or any other sort of um, villain song you hear. It was really, really well done with the big words and everything. And the, the one thing that will come up later on how this works is how different he sang it between the bad Scrooge and the good Scrooge. And this one, while he was bad Scrooge, there wasn't much singing to it. Okay, it was a lot of chanting of, I hate people. I'm going to say these words in time, but I hate people. And it goes through everything like that. And then when he turns good Scrooge, he actually starts using um, notes and following pitches and everything. and actually gives sort of a musical aspect to it. Okay. But like I said, that opening, it was great. Everything. We move on um, to Marley. And Marley was played by none other than Alec Guinness. Yes, Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Star Wars uh, films, the original series. Alec Guinness played Marley. The only thing that I really saw... That was a little bit strange was when, when he walked, he tried sometimes too hard to be a ghost, but still carrying the chains and everything. So it was kind of a weird limp like this thing. Okay. So that was a little weird. But other than that, Marley fit the bill perfectly. He followed the story. He hit everything. He showed the ghost. He actually flew Scrooge with the ghost out of the place where I thought was a nice touch. But just because of the... Uh, the weird walk, uh, I had to give him one point on the interpretation because I just didn't like that. So a 14 out of 15 on that one. Um, but the one thing I will say about this Marley and how Alec Guinness did it was he had a personality. Um, he, he was sarcastic. Scrooge asked the normal, can you sit down? Well, of course I can sit down. What do you think I am? And I mean, there were some along those lines. It was just, it was really well done. Let me move on to the ghost of Christmas past. Um... The, the ghost of Christmas past, the actual ghost itself, was played by an, an elderly Victorian woman and very prim and proper. And it, it was it was strange. It, it was really strange how it was. But everything they did with the Christmas past 
was right on point. It followed the book. I hit everything. Um, I mean, it was the, the, the one thing that was there was there was a giant number for Fezziwig's party uh, called December the 25th, which was really, and I, I know I kind of said that in time. Sorry, music uh, teacher, it's going to happen that way. Uh, Belle had a great song that shows the development of Scrooge's relationship with her. And then she comes in and had a, a very, very good breakup scene where he chooses money over her, even though he doesn't know it. Um, for all that, that was great. So I gave it a five out of five on True to the Book and an eight out of five on Interpretation, mostly because of just the way that it was acted throughout the Ghost of Christmas cast. So a 13 out of 15 on that one. Then we have the Ghost of Christmas Present. This was a very, very good Ghost of Christmas Present. The, the only thing that I have to say is they missed a lot of the different scenarios. Like Fred's scene in this was completely different than what it normally was. There was no Martha from the Cratchits. Um, but Tiny Tim, well, he sang a song. and But unlike the previous Tiny Tim that sang a song, this one... He actually looked young and had an undeveloped voice. So the fact that he missed some notes was actually really adorable. Um, I, I thought that was very well done and everything. But the one thing that really bothered me on this part was Scrooge a a was basically, uh, or I should say the ghost caused Scrooge to be intoxicated the whole time. He gave him the milk of human kindness and Scrooge would drink from this giant chalice being like, huge everything else <laughs> yeah everything's all happy and stuff and at one point he gets angry that during fred's party scene and the ghost says you need more of these okay and then from there I mean, the end of the ghost was just really abrupt okay all of a sudden he brings him back home and all of a sudden he's gone like literally he says in line says i could be over in an instant and he's gone okay no children of ignorance and want so a three out of five on the book on that one, but a nine out of 10, the interpretation, I really did enjoy how it happened. Um, the, the nine out of 10s only because I really didn't like the fact that Scrooge was getting drunk um, to in order to see all of this. Then we get to the ghost of um, Christmas yet to come. First off, this story, this part of the story was completely different uh, from the Christmas Carol. I mean, just completely different. Uh, they, they didn't have the men talking on it. Old Joe didn't exist. Instead, they decided to sing a song, um, a very happy, lively song called Thank You Very Much. Um, and they're thanking Scrooge for dying because all of their debts are now over. And, and how they worked it so that we still had sort of a mystery with Scrooge is Scrooge thought they were actually thanking him and that they thought he was kind. And they kind of hid the casket behind him. But then all of a sudden, the guy that's leading this, um, he's a hot soup vendor. He's dancing on top of Scrooge's coffin on the cart is going through and everybody's just dancing behind him. And it's just a, a thank you very much. A thank you very much. I mean, it just goes over and over again how they're thanking him that he's dead. Okay. And then there's a huge abrupt change into the Cratchits where we see that Tiny Tim has passed away. And, and just going from that happy to that sad, there was no real transition. It was like, oh, there's the Cratchit's house. I'm going to go look inside. And all of a sudden everybody's just crying. And, and it was just, it was, th that that whole section right there, there was a lot missing of the dialogue, the underdevelopedness, everything. But but overall, I, I thought even though it didn't follow the book, it was a very, very good adaptation of it and a very good representation of it. The, the song is very catchy. I've had Thank You Very Much stuck in my head for the past couple hours since I watched this. And it just keeps going over and over in my head. And it's, it was very really well done. So a 2 out of 5 on that one. And then a 7 out of 10 on how that all followed. Now, Scrooge almost got, going back to Scrooge, to give those uh, points there. The next part is really where we lost all the points for Scrooge is true to the book. After the ghost of Christmas yet to come, Scrooge is pushed into his grave and he ends up in hell. And Marley meets him, takes him to, or basically has this whole spiel of how the devil thought you were so bad that he wants you to work for him, puts him in an office, and then these four giant men bring this huge chain and wrap him up in it. And that's really what caused him to change. Um, it, it wasn't so much how uh, how people thought about him, because obviously they he thought it was a very big dance number. Thank you very much. They thought they all adored him. 
but but the chains there really were what scared him into submission basically for the transformation which is why the transformation didn't get a perfect score i gave that one um, a seven out of ten so true to the book four out of five would have been perfect if they didn't have the little scene from hell nine out of ten on bad scrooge just a very well done and good scrooge this is the first really good scrooge change within the personality that i have seen throughout this so we have actually a five out of five on this one i mean he goes through he spends a ton of money on not just the charity and the turkey but he buys gifts for all the people and everything else and it's just it was a very well done good scrooge giving uh scrooge a 23 out of 30 on that and then down to the extra stuff cinematography i mean the the director and the cinematographer got this so right. They they had times where it zoomed in, times where it zoomed out. A couple times that the, the camera was kind of stagnant or really didn't need to change. I mean, a couple of those. So 8 out of 10 on that one. The costumes, these are probably some of my favorite costumes of the ghosts, um, with the exception of uh, the Ghost of Christmas to come because it just wasn't really that scary. These are probably some of my favorite costumes. So I gave that 9 out of 10. And the music, like I said, it was catchy. It got stuck in my head. It was all performed well. And, and, and the transition from Mean Scrooge to Good Scrooge of it being a chant to an actual song, which is very well done. So I gave that one a 9 out of 10 as well. Okay, guys, so that was 1970 Scrooge starring Albert Finney as... Uh, the titular character. Make sure you wait uh, for episode 13. It should be coming out really soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying what you're seeing. God bless all of you, and that's a wrap.